Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel if you're new around here. My name is Hannah Hawthorne and I am Simply Witched. Today I will be reviewing Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmimer. If this is the first of my book reviews that you are seeing, these are the books that I read as part of my Discord book club. At the end of the month I post my review here to begin discussions within the group, but also to share my thoughts in case you are interested in reading the book even if that is months after the review comes out. As always, I like to begin by reading the summary of the book, and today that says, as a botanist, Robin Wall Kimmimer has been trained to ask questions of nature with the tools of science. As a member of the citizen Potawatomi nation, she embraces the notions that plants and animals are our oldest teachers. In Braiding Sweetgrass, Kimmimer brings these two lenses of knowledge together to take us on a journey that is every bit as mythic as it is scientific, as sacred as it is historical, and as clever as it is wise. Drawing on her life, as an indigenous scientist and as a woman, Kimmimer shows how other living beings, asters and goldenrod, strawberries and squash, salamanders, algae and sweetgrass, offer us gifts and lessons, even if we've forgotten how to hear their voices. In reflections that range from the creation of Turtle Island to the forces that threaten its flourishing today, she circles towards a central argument, that the awakening of ecological consciousness requires the acknowledgement and celebration of our our reciprocal relationship with the rest of the living world. For only when we hear the language of other beings we will be capable of understanding the generosity of the earth and learn to give our own gifts in return. I think this summary explains what the book is, but it doesn't come close to giving it justice. I cannot give this book enough praise, and it's going to be difficult for me to review this one because I don't have much to add to all of the wonderful things that have already been said within the book. There are so many lessons that I need each and every one of you to read because nothing I say will come close to giving this book the justice it deserves. I was talking to Colton last night while I was writing the script for this book and I was like I don't even know what to say because I can't add anything to this conversation. I can only sing praise for this book. It's kind of like when you see a movie that is so good it is so mind-blowing you can't even describe it to people. You just want them to go see it. It's one of those situations where you're like you have to just go watch it because even even if I try to describe the plot to you, it is so much more than I can muster with my words. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words, and the author creates a picture within this book. The imagery that was coming to my mind was unparalleled. And I was trying to figure out what was so different about this book that I had never seen before. And then it clicked when the author began talking about how indigenous language is structured. Within English, we have a lot of nouns. Things are person, places, or things. We talk about the natural world as if it is inanimate. And that is so much different than the dialogue that is used within indigenous languages. And if you read this book, you will notice it immediately. And even though this author is writing in English, you are going to be able to tell from the very first page that there is a completely different worldview and perspective that they are able to get across through their writing that I have never seen presented in English. And that was the first thing that I noticed, the writing style, and I absolutely fell in love with it. In the same breath, I want to say that I feel absolutely honored to be able to read the sacred knowledge presented within this book. But at the same time, there is a deep level of sadness to that when you know, and it is explained throughout the book, that this information, this sacred indigenous knowledge, was nearly exterminated. And a lot of it was lost to colonization. You can read articles about the atrocities that were committed against indigenous peoples, but there is nothing like reading the first-hand account. And that is what is in this book. The author talks about how her heritage was stripped from her family and how they were forbidden by law to practice their religion. It was illegal for them to partake in their own culture. And that is something that I've never read. Like I said, I've read articles and historical documentations of the things that have occurred, but it is so different when you're hearing it from the perspective of this author who is saying, my grandmother, my grandfather. And that provided me with a perspective that I could not have gained otherwise. So I highly recommend reading this book for multiple reasons, but one, just to educate yourself on indigenous culture and history. This book really expanded my world 
worldview and challenge the way that I think about things without being too taxing or unapproachable. It has me finding new ways to adjust my thinking and my language. I rarely buy physical books anymore because I live in a studio apartment and truly I don't have space to keep adding to my collection so I read audiobooks. So as usual I did listen to the audio version of this book which I loved. It is narrated by the author which was really great especially because some of the words I had never heard before and the pronunciations would have been hard for me to extrapolate just from reading them and so it was really nice to hear them coming from her voice. But I will be buying a physical copy of this book because I need it. This is the kind of book that you want to savor and I do anticipate rereading this multiple times. One of the reasons that I really wanted to read this book is I often struggle with connecting to the land I live on because I am not indigenous to it. I am not an indigenous person, I am from European descent but I live in America. But obviously I am a pagan, I practice a nature-based spirituality which depends heavily on connecting to the land that I reside on and sometimes that leaves me in a weird place. I was really hoping that this book would help me with my struggle with that and offer me guidance in doing that in the most respectful way that I could and it did. Braiding Sweetgrass talks about becoming indigenous to place and there's a quote I want to pull from from this. The author says, becoming indigenous to place means living as if your children's future matters. To take care of the land as if our lives, both material and spiritual, depend on it. There is an indigenous creation story within this book and without getting too much into it because one, I don't feel like it's really my place to tell that story and two, I definitely wouldn't do it justice but essentially it is the story of Sky Woman. She is the first indigenous person and she falls from the sky to the earth and she is a stranger to that land. She has never been there before and so she must turn to the beings that have lived there before her to learn how to live. With the plants and animals as her teacher, she becomes indigenous. And the author challenges the reader to do that wherever they live, to become a steward of their environment. And that story, that chapter, led me to a really good place and provided me that guidance that I was seeking. But my absolute favorite chapter was the Thanksgiving address. It is the thing that I keep returning to. I actually screenshotted it on my phone and I have been reading it every morning. Like the author said, it is a wonderful way to start the day and I have gotten so much out of it. This book is the author's memoir, a story of indigenous culture and her love letter to the planet. She shares her experience growing up around living things and all of the lessons she has learned from them. This is a must read for deepening your connection to nature and understanding your relationship with the earth. And it is the best conversation surrounding sustainability that I have ever seen. In 2022, sustainability feels like it's kind of lost its meaning because every company that wants to greenwash throws it on everything and slaps it on every single product. But this author details exactly what that means and that is consuming at the same rate that you are giving back as an act of reciprocity. She beautifully illustrates that the way that we speak about the world matters. When we look at it as a thing, it is so easy to overconsume and destroy. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the hope this book gave me for the future of our planet. Knowing that there are so many smart scientists like the author Robin Wall Kimmerer who have a deep knowledge and understanding of science but also a deep love and admiration for the planet. I am not a very analytical person. I am not math and science were never my thing. And this book is the perfect cumulation between science and spirituality. I hope it goes without saying that I care deeply for the welfare of our planet, but kitty, my cat is scratching the couch. Hey, stop it. Okay. But like I said, I am the creative right brain sort of person, but it gives me great peace of mind knowing that there are people who are a symbiosis of both. People that have both the desire to stick up for the planet, to combat against global warming, but also the knowledge to be able to do so. Like I'm sure a lot of you do, I have a lot of anxiety surrounding the future of our planet. Every day we see acts of violence committed against Mother Earth, like giant trash piles floating around the ocean, oil spills, deforestation, overconsumption, and just the list goes on. And that causes me so much fear, but when I read books 
books like this by brilliant individuals who have the drive but also power to do something, it makes me want to be part of something bigger. So please, please read this book. I could even see this becoming like a high school biology curriculum must read book. In fact, if everybody was forced to read this book when they were growing up, I think that we would be in a much different position now. So that is all I have for you today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification. The next book that I will be reviewing and reading for our April Discord book club is Welsh Witchcraft. So if you would like to read alongside me, we will be getting on the first. I do also announce these books on my Instagram on the first of every single month. So to join my Discord and to keep up with me between uploads, all of my other platforms will be linked down below. So until next time, have a magical rest of your day, blessed be, and bye everyone.